Hey, how's it going guys and welcome back. So today's video is sort of a discussion topic that I've been wanting to have with you guys because I do think that it is quite relevant, especially as we get more and more monster taming games and the topic of PVP comes up. Basically what we're gonna be doing today is discussing why I think that some games in particular have what I call a PVP problem in the genre and how I think indie developers of single player monster taming games that want to have PVP in their games should prioritize that moving forward. You might think this is a video talking about why more games should have PVP and you'll be surprised to know that no that's not what I'm getting at with this video but anyways sit back relax and let's talk Okay, so what do I mean when I say that there's a PvP problem that exists in the monster taming genre? Well, and obviously this isn't a blanket statement that'll affect every single game, but I find that in many cases with monster taming games, especially in the indie scene, a lot of these games tend to put a lot of focus and energy into PvP, or player versus player if you haven't been following, which ends up potentially exhausting resources and time from the developers, which is totally fine if the game has an active player base, but I oftentimes notice that these games don't. The the original Nexomon on mobile had PvP, for example, and a lot of people were upset that this feature wasn't included in Nexomon Extinction. However, one of the reasons the developer didn't continue it is because the PvP scene dwindled very fast. Furthermore, if we look at some more recent examples like Coromon, another game that released with PvP on launch, and again, about a month or two passed and the servers are pretty dead. Monster Sanctuary has had the same problem, same with Monster Crown, and if we go into earlier prototype versions of games like the Cubers or Kindred Fates Alphas, these games also have issues with matchmaking, and in this case on day one. This isn't really surprising as even in a game like Temtem, which sold over a million copies, if you start to play ranked matchmaking a lot, you're gonna start to run into the same players pretty often, just because the player base needs to be massive in order to properly facilitate these sort of systems. I mean, hell, I play Call of Duty in my spare time, and even just yesterday, Yesterday, as of the time of putting this together, I got matched up with the same people three times in a row. Now, obviously, these types of games with ranked play specifically will try to match you with people in the same skill camp as you. However, Coromon and Temtem have sort of ranked systems as well, so you can kind of see where the issue starts to pop up. Now, I'm not saying that PvP is inherently a bad thing to have. I think it's one of those things that we all want games to have, but don't really use it that much. Like, for example, if the next Pokemon game didn't include PvP, which Legends didn't, and a lot of people complained about that, but you would see a massive uproar from a lot of people that don't actually use the system. You can argue that that would just be a symptom of a lot of people feeling like Pokemon's been cutting features over the years, but I remember when Nexomon Extinction launched, a lot of people didn't buy it specifically because it didn't have PvP, which to me begs the question, where were all of these PvP people when Nexomon servers went dead or when Coromon servers went dead? We have a few really good monster taming games with PvP servers, but it seems like a lot of them are always devoid of players. So that being said, am I saying that monster entertainment game should avoid PvP and give it up altogether? Absolutely not. However, I do think that unless PvP and or online connectivity is one of the main features and draws to one of these games, developers should treat it as a bonus feature and decide whether or not they want to implement PvP based on the reception from the community and the numbers that they're seeing. It can always be added as an additional feature at launch as well if these games blow up. Personally, I've been seeing a lot of games focus their resources towards PvP, whether it be for alpha or beta, or just behind the scenes when the vast majority of players aren't going to be using these systems and I think that the player count is going to be a massively important thing to consider when implementing these features since by nature they're going to require an active community in order to function. Don't forget PvP development has affected various games in terms of balance in the single player story, the development and release processes, etc. Look at Coromon's delay on Switch. That was due to PvP not functioning properly on the Nintendo Switch. With the Kindred Fates Alpha and Beta, these are both combat-centric aspects of the game, which is primarily a single-player game. And even Mithrin's been tackling a lot of netcode stuff, which again is going to be something that most people don't actually interact with. But yeah, guys, let me know what you think about this. Do you think developers need to focus less on PvP, especially with games that are primarily meant to be single player experiences? I personally feel like in a lot of cases, the players that don't want to engage with PvP end up getting 
hit with longer development cycles, potential delays, or in the case with something like Kindred Fates, the alpha and beta specifically being PvP dedicated. Whereas personally, and I'm sure I speak for a lot of people, we more so want to see single player content since that's the focus of the game. But yeah, definitely let me know your guys' thoughts. Maybe I'm off base here, but I just feel like if all of these people who want PvP in this game actually interacted with it, these games wouldn't have dead servers. But yeah, all that being said, if you want to stay up to date all things monster taming, definitely subscribe to my channel for daily content. You can check out my Twitter, Discord, and Patreon linked below. And special thanks to the patrons, especially Jim Hamilton, Dro Ghost, Dark Persona, Exodus, and Candy Marunzi. And we'll see you next time. Peace.